This is a light table at Dolphin Multimedia in Palo Alto, California. They specialize in presentation graphics, but guess what? They use IBM PS2s. Yes, you can find Macs here also, of course, but the moral of the story is you can do high-quality business graphics without a Macintosh using your good old PC. Today on part two of our special series on desktop presentation graphics, we take a look at some of the top-rated DPG software packages for the IBM-compatible world on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you that software piracy is a federal offense. When a few people steal software, everyone loses. Additional funding is provided by CompuServe, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, by Byte Magazine and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange, and by Intel Corporation, Personal Computer Enhancement. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Schiffe. This is Gary Kildall. And Gary, I haven't gone into the software business. <laughs> These are all DPG desktop presentation graphics programs. For oh, wait a minute. I don't see uh, the GEM presentation team here anywhere. Uh, digital research. Uh, <laughs> yeah. GEM presentation team is sitting right here, oh, as you yeah. know. Okay. Gary, we're talking about desktop presentation mm -hmm. software for the IBM compatible world. Give us an example of your approach. To okay. It. Well, what I'm going to do, first of all, is give you an idea what business graphics is, and you know, yeah. just to refresh that. Uh, we're dealing basically with trying to, say, do charts for overhead transparencies, bulleted items, things like that, or trying to graph, uh, say, Lotus 1, 2, 3 files or DBase files. Uh -huh. And so we do this with uh, three programs, actually. We do uh, use our, our uh, graphing program, graph application. We also have the word chart application, and then we combine these with draw. Uh -huh. Now, what I'm going to do here, just in the interest, interest of time, is just to um, show you the final result. Okay. So we can get on with some looking at some of the other things. So I'm bringing up draw right here, and I'll open up a pre-prepared uh, graph and we'll see what the combination of text and graphics look like. I'm going to go to a full scale, full screen here. You can see uh -huh. here's the final result of putting it together text with graphics. And I'll just go ahead and send this to the output device. And in this case, we're going to just use a screen. But it could be a slide uh, maker or um, oh, uh, over a transparency uh -huh. maker, whatever it happens to be. And that, that would be the final result that you'd see. Sure. Gary, we're going to look at the competition today. <laughs> okay. One of them is this package over here. Uh, Xerox Presents was one of the first ones for the PC to use a Mac-like graphic interface. We're going to start with a visit to a company in San Jose that uses Xerox Presents. The FMC Corporation in San Jose, California, designs and builds armored vehicles, like the all-terrain Bradley Fighting Vehicle. The San Jose office is also home to the company's computer product testing center, where hardware and software are evaluated. A recent addition to FMC's software lineup was Xerox Presents, a desktop presentation package for PCs running in the Microsoft Windows environment. The ability to create in-house slide presentations on a moment's notice has already paid off for FMC. We had three days to put together a large slide presentation, 35 millimeter slides from scratch. Uh, we had no time to contact an outside agency. And we had just received the uh, Xerox Presents and decided to uh, give it a try. We had to, do, had to use something. It was available. And we put together a fairly extensive 35 millimeter slide presentation, including the turnaround time in sending the images to a slide service uh, and back uh, with proofs and so on, all in 72 hours. The FMC office has a mixture of PCs, PS2s, and Macintoshes, an arrangement that often implies different machines for different applications. But FMC departments mix software types with machine types. Xerox Presents, for example, brings some Mac-like graphics abilities to the company's large base of PC users, with a few drawbacks. There is uh, an immature file exchange uh, capability at this point on the IBM PC platform. Uh, what should be a standard file format isn't quite standard, and there are differences. You'll import a, a picture, and it will have changed somehow. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel.
Joining us in the studio now is Carrie Fulbright with Harvard Graphics, and next to Carrie, Michael Rubenstein of Lotus, makers of Freelance Plus. Carrie? Uh, Carrie, last week we looked at four desktop um, presentation graphics packages for the Macintosh. Uh, now, what makes the IBM PC better or worse, let's say, uh, for presentation graphics in the Mac? Well, I'd say that what makes it better is that most of our users in corporate America have PCs, many more PCs than they do Macs. And by giving them Harvard Graphics, what we're allowing them to do is create equal or better presentations on a PC without having to go to a Mac for presentation graphics. So you see the, the primary use of presenta presentation graphics in the business market then? Very much so. Uh, people don't do presentations at home, of course. Uh, what we find is our users are doing, uh, whether it's hard copy output or slides or, or overhead presentations. All right, Gary, Harvard Graphics is pretty commonly used in the PC world, as you mentioned. Give us a little introduction to how, how one would use it. All right. It. Uh, we create uh, various types of text and data charts, as well as have drawing capabilities. We are here in a text chart, and I've entered some data already. I'm going to hit F2 to preview this chart, and we've got a very basic pre-formatted a uh, bullet chart which I could use right now, output it on a, uh, on a slide or on a transparency. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, a lot of our users are importing data when they're creating data charts from a Lotus spreadsheet. They've already entered the data. They don't want to retype that. And we've got a capability both to import the data. Harvard Graphics warns you if you haven't saved what you've done. Uh -huh. I'm going to import a graph set up in Lotus here and customize that somewhat. One thing I'd like to do is add a total column and one of the unique features of Harvard Graphics is the ability to do calculations in your chart. Take a look at that. I've now got both the total line and the component. Okay, so you imported the graph from Lotus. You then did the calculation inside Harvard Graphics. Inside Harvard Graphics. Okay. Uh, just to clean this up a little, I'll make the individual components into bars, and I'll make it a 3D overlap chart. And this way, I can uh -huh. look both across January as across the products. Uh, a lot of people, when they look at graphs, they think people are trying to mislead them with graphs. Yes. And so we've added a feature we call Data Table. And what Data Table does is puts a spreadsheet underneath your chart so that you mm -hmm. can actually, if you want to look up the data, you don't have to go to a separate page Okay, Do you have a drawing capability also then? Yes, we do. We have, uh, in Harvard Graphics, most of the drawing tools that people need, uh, adding, moving, editing objects, deleting. We also okay. come with 300 symbols. All uh, right. Uh, if we'd like to take a look at Freelance Plus, right. if you can sort of get out of, uh, of Harvard Graphics there for a minute. Okay, and Carrie, you also have an example of some of the uh, uh, graph output, right? From yes. From Harvard Graphics. Uh, this is transparency of uh, create in Harvard Graphics using both the preformat pie chart as well as a, uh, one of the existing symbols. And what, and what would what would you get that output on? You can do this that on was, a laser printer? Or this what? was printed on a color thermal printer. On a color thermal. Yes. Okay, how, how are you doing? We have Freelance Plus we could take a look at? Sure. What I'm going to do is load up Freelance Plus, and as I do, I'd like to mention that Freelance Plus is a full charting package as uh -huh. well, offers full um, drawing capabilities, and what, I, wh what I'll be showing you is how Freelance can take data out of 1, 2, 3, build, build a chart, size and position that chart, and then add some uh, drawing elements, if you will, so that you don't have to be an artist. Uh -huh. I'm going to retrieve a chart file that will have some data already formatted for me. And what, I, what I'd like you to notice is that as I move through this form, I can enter data. For example, I've got my legend data entered. And on the next form, I've got all of my information that I would like to to chart, well, almost all of it. Actually, up here, I want to get some information still from 123. I can move to the data links portion, and notice that most of the information has been entered into this form. Okay, these are existing 123 range names. Exactly. Uh -huh. I'm going to be pulling information from 123 via the range name capability, so I don't have to know cell locations. And I'll just fill in this form. Now, I've got everything except the heading. And what I would like to do, because I don't know exactly where that is, is pull up the 123 file itself. This is a release 3 file, by the way, and we will support uh -huh. every, each of the earlier versions of 123 also. I can, using the same point of movement keys that you have in 123, highlight a range and actually pull that into the chart form. And as I update this um, chart form, what you'll see is very quickly, I can draw that chart on screen. And I'm going to put it on screen, full screen, first of all. And then what I'd like to do is, well, now that I can see how it, how it looks, I'd like to back out of here and uh, move down and add some 3D effects, for example. And when I go back to drawing the chart, 
Rather than drawing it full screen, I'd like to demonstrate that I can shrink that chart down to fit uh -huh. in the area of the screen that I would like it. And as I draw it, everything will be um, quite a bit smaller, but it has sized itself appropriately mm -hmm. to fit in the available space. Now that I've got the chart, I'd like to show you a little bit of the drawing capability. I'm going to move down to page two, as it's called. This is a blank form right now. I'm going to retrieve a drawing file that will be the western states of the U.S. Mm -hmm. Presumably, this is what I want to bring up to put on the same page as my chart. This is rather small on screen right now. Um, what I would like to do is uh, select all of this and then copy it back up to page one. It is fairly small right now. Freelance Plus does support a mouse, and I can move this, this uh, object, if you will, around, and I will get those uh, states on screen, as you see. Still fairly small, so what I can do is edit the size of this and actually stretch this and have it fit exactly as I would like on screen. Mm -hmm. Once I have drawn the states where I want them, um, what I can do is uh, edit the color of them. Perhaps I want them to be red so mm -hmm. that they will stand out a little bit more. Freelance Plus will also allow me to add text wherever I would like. And I'd like to point out that California is number one. And I'll just do that. CA is number one and position that up at the top of the screen. That is uh, fairly small. So I'd like to edit the height of the text, and maybe we'll make it 10 millimeters high. It looks a little bit better. How about if I add an arrow for emphasis and point out really what we are talking about with California? And if I switch to the mouse, notice that I can switch uh -huh. between the mouse yeah, and the that's keyboard. Great. Easily. Carrie, on Harvard Graphics, I know you have lots of different accessories right now. Are there plans to sort of bring that together in, a, in an integrated package? Uh, some of them. Some of the accessories are products that some of our users a limited market of our users want, such uh -huh. as the map, U.S. Map Maker. Some of them, such as our new Draw Partner accessory, add features like zoom and rotate point editing, which we expect to include in the next version of Harvard Graphics. I guess both of these packages have uh, libraries of objects that you can bring and build uh, uh, your own graphs out of the predefined uh, libraries. Right? Yes, Freelance mm -hmm. Plus has over 900 already drawn symbols, so mm -hmm. you don't have to be an artist, and we let you take any of those and change them as you wish so that they really fit for mm -hmm. your purpose. Harvard Graphics and Freelance Plus, thanks very much, gentlemen. If you want to add some pizzazz to your presentation, you may want to do more than just a slideshow. Maybe you want animation. Well, here's a report on one animation product, Animator, from Autodesk. Video presentations like this one can be quite expensive to produce, but this animation was done inexpensively on an IBM PC using a program called Animator from Autodesk. The secret to Animator is its use of automated animation techniques. Well, traditionally, when you animate, you draw each frame one at a time, and it's a painstaking process of incremental motion. And uh, in Autodesk Animator, out of the five kinds of animation that we allow people to produce, four of those kinds are automatic and interpolate shapes from one position to another. So people just draw the first position and the last position, and it creates all of the in-between shapes. Images can be created with Animator's Paint program or imported from a wide range of drawing programs. Images, text, and photographs can be combined to create animations which can run on your computer or be output to a VCR. While the business user can easily learn how to work with Animator, more complicated animations may require some additional expertise. Talent is always very useful, and depending on the level of presentation that you're creating, uh, uh, it may be very useful to have a graphics specialist, but if you just want to have your company logo float in uh, or tear off a piece of, uh, uh, say, your, uh, an image that might represent, say, your, your corporate headquarters to get people's attention, that kind of thing is very easy to do in Animator. Autodesk's Animator runs on any IBM-compatible 286 or 386 PC with a VGA card, a hard drive, and a mouse. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. With us in the studio now is Ted Salamon from IBM's desktop software division. And next to Ted, we have Steve Cullen with Micrographics. Steve, uh, earlier in the show, we viewed two packages that would, I think it was more traditional. Uh, spreadsheet-based uh, graphing and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, now, how does your product, Graph Plus, differ from, say, Freelance or uh, Harvard Graphics? Well, Graph Plus differs in a number of ways. Most notably is that it runs in the Windows environment. So 
that we work with pull down menus and icons and dialog boxes and mm -hmm. use the mouse interface primarily or some of the other applications we and, use the keyboard. And what is it, what's the overall purpose and how do you present it? The overall purpose of that is number one to provide an easier and more consistent interface to well, the what user. I mean is, what is the overall purpose of what, what does the package do? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. the Graph Plus package mm -hmm. is intended to be a, a two and three dimensional charting application to read Lotus 1, 2, 3, uh, Symphony and Excel spreadsheet data. Okay. It works yeah. primarily as a financial and statistical. Right, Steve, platform. I think you're going to show this all off without a keyboard, right? I'm going to try. You're using <laughs> a P70 IBM portable and just a mouse. I'm going to give it my best okay. shot. Okay, show, show us the product. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, we'll bring up the worksheet to show you that it, it actually does look like your existing spreadsheet products. And we'll pull down the file menu and open up some data and bring it into the worksheet area. And you notice I just double click on the uh, file that I want to load. Uh -huh. And now I'll just highlight the information and go over to the chart type that I want to select. And we'll start off with a column chart. And these are some predefined formats. And I'll scroll through the different chart types. And here we have a bar chart and an area chart with different formats as well. A table chart which allows us to put a picture of the worksheet in the uh, graph itself. And uh, scatter charts and pie charts. Mm -hmm. And of course line charts. So we'll start off with a column chart and make it 3D to start with. Just by selecting new, I'll place the chart on the page wherever I want it to start. And we're actually looking at a full 8.5 by 11 landscape page, mm -hmm. which we can customize in Graph Plus. Now I'll just size the chart, and you'll see that we can just grab any of the handles to do that sizing. And here's the column chart as uh, mm -hmm. we needed it. If we view out, we can look at all the pages. And we're actually working on 12 8.5 by 11 pages, so we can do a full presentation right within one Graph Plus file. We'll view back into the existing page. And we'll scale this chart back down because we want to put multiple charts on that page. Graph Plus allows you to put as many charts on one page as you like. So we'll bring the worksheet back up and highlight just one set of data. So as you can see, we'll put multiple charts on the page based on different sets of data. What was the size of this worksheet you're using here? The worksheet is 16,384 by 256. So you're, you're pulling in a lot of data. We can this. bring in a very large set of data. Okay. That's what makes it so good for financial and statistical uh -huh. and scientific uses. So here's a pie chart. Again, it automatically labels the chart for you. We'll show off the projection capabilities of Graph Plus, which allow us to do a three-dimensional view of that chart. And there you have it. And we'll scale that down to give it a little perspective. Then we can grab any wedge of the chart and explode it, just to add that little pizzazz to it. Uh -huh. And that works with any part of the chart. We also have up to 16 million colors in Graph Plus to work with. So we can go in and pull up a color palette and scroll through the different colors. Let's select the uh, Miami Vice palette, as we call it, and we'll set that on the screen. And there you can see how simple yeah. it is to change yeah. the chart colors all in one fell swoop. Now, what about, uh, do you have any th special effects between um, the displays as these things come in? We do have a product called Slideshow that comes with I Graph see. Plus okay. and allows you to use either Designer, which is another micro graphics product, or Graph Plus files and do the transitions between the screens. Mm -hmm. Also, Steve, can you import from different software programs, bring in spreadsheets from not just 1, 2, 3 files, but somewhere else? Yes, we work with 1, 2, 3, Symfony, uh, Microsoft Excel, uh, diff files, so if you want to bring in database uh -huh. files. And because we run in a Windows environment, we can also bring Excel files through the Windows clipboard. So that's very nice. Steve, you actually did do an entire demo without <laughs> touching the keyboard using only the mouse. That's right. Uh, you've got a keyboard, I'm afraid. That, yes, but you've got Storyboard Plus. Tell us again, what new element does Storyboard Plus add to presentations? Well, Storyboard Plus version 2 is a business multimedia product that allows you to mix text, voice, music, animation, and video in an interactive uh -huh. manner through pull-down menus and icons. All right, give us a little idea of what's inside Certainly. Here. Well, there are five modules. We have Picture Maker, which is where you create your images. You have Picture Taker, which allows you to capture screens in a DOS environment. Story Editor is where you assemble all the files and put time sequences and the interactivity into them. Storyteller is a runtime module, which can ship on diskette with your story so people don't have to have Storyboard Plus to actually see the communications uh -huh. you're sending. And Text Maker is a module which allows you to annotate any text screens you may happen to take with Picture Taker. All right, show us how you would actually build something. With okay, we're going to go into Picture Maker here very quickly. I'll show you a sample of it, and then I'll show a finished product for you. You can come in very easily and pull down the menu to the library, and without any graphic skill or very little at all, find an image that you might want to bring in, such as this truck here. And we'll bring it down here, and I'm going to pull down the menu and flip it because I really don't like the direction it's facing. So let's flip that, and that's perfectly fine now. I'm going to come over here to the brush icon and come down and select a different active color in the lower left-hand screen, come back up, and 
take that rectangle, make it a fill shape, just come down so how you can start to adjust the images on screen. And basically, it doesn't take much. You just point the mouse and click. Mm -hmm. What I'm also going to show you is the finished picture. We did just a little while ago. We're just going to load it in here. And you'll see exactly what I mean, how easy it is to take a frame. The time I'm spending to load this file is about how much time I actually use to finish okay. it. Before. And you could be combining this with text and putting it as part of you know, one picture in a presentation. Yes, a this would be a frame, and you would be able to add music or text or start animating different portions of this. How many this. objects do you have in the library? Oh, there, do you ship with it? there are 300 pieces mm -hmm. in the okay. library that comes with it. All right, now you said this does animation and combines animation and video. Now yes, that's it what does. I want to see. Okay, what we're going to do is go into the other module that uh, will allow us to do that and come down to Storyteller and show the folks basically how it's done when you're sending a story to someone that doesn't have storyboard. And this demonstration that we're about to see comes by way of a third party publisher called Crepid Publishing. Uh -huh. And they uh, sell an art pack with more animations. And there you okay, see there's, a, your animation. there's a sprite, and basically his movements are pre canned, and you can specify. So you don't have to develop that animation no, on your own? No. You just say whether you want him to go left or right or whatever happens there. Uh, the nice part about this Whoa, is. Oh, okay, now what's mm -hmm. that? Well, you see the art pack comes with a video editor that allows you to go to a maximum of 20 frames per second in color or black and white video. The very nice part about this is that you do not need hardware to play back the video. Of course, you need it to capture yeah. and the output, but you can send this to anyone and they don't have to have a video board to play it back with. Uh -huh. Now, how much uh, storage does it take for each one of these video frames? The video frames, uh, they're Actually, it depends on how much you mm. do as far as the resolution you use. It takes a lot, but it's, yeah, it's yeah, quite a bit. It, it's not right. small, but also here there's no compression and decompression. It just sits on a hard file, and that's why we're able to play it back without any extra hardware. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And you could digitize stills and put them in there and integrate that as part exactly of the Exactly right. Also. It doesn't have to be animated. It can be, be stills as well. Ted, what, is, uh, now what use do you see for this type of package? Is it, again, presentations or...? Well, presentation is a part of it to spice them up, to go beyond just linear slideshows. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is that you can incorporate people's images when they're doing training sessions so that when they're playing them back, they're actively involved in it and there's more retention. Yeah. They'll play it back later at trade shows to draw crowds, uh, any now, seminars about, or sessions. In terms of the sound, how, do, how does the sound, uh, we, we obviously don't have it here today, but, uh, right. but is it quite audible? Voice there level, there voice are. Voice two boards. There's an IBM music feature board and okay. we have music soundtracks that you can tie in here and there's a speech adapter where you can digitize your own voice and then play it back. Ted, mm -hmm. Steve, we're out of time. Gary and I are going to be back in just a minute with some final thoughts. All right, Gary, that last thing we saw, Storyboard Plus, was pretty impressive, really. I mean, that brings desktop sure, sure. presentations to a different level. Yeah, uh, it's, I guess it's, it's really multimedia, right? Yeah. Because yeah, we're talking yeah. about sound and, and animation and live video and all sorts it's of things. It's not just doing slideshows on a computer. Right, and I think that's what we've been sort of seeing to this point is, like, how do we do the same thing with a computer that we uh -huh, do with a slideshow? Uh -huh. And, and this, this takes us to the next level where we're really using a computer system in a, in, a, in a good way. Final point, Gary, would be we've done two shows on this. We saw DPG software for the Mac and for the PC. Uh, and you used to think you could only do this with a Macintosh. Do you think the products for the PC are of equivalent uh, Well, I think what we've seen on the show is that, that they seem to be this, pretty much the same on the low end and the high end. Uh -huh. Doesn't it seem like it to you? Well, certainly the Storyboard yeah. Plus, I mean, you had, you had all the elements there, right. didn't you? Yeah, so I think it's just going to be real interesting when we start getting the, the right peripherals, you know, so we get <laughs> right, projectors right, right, that are really right, inexpensive. Right. And, and then, then be able to use this true multimedia and presentations from at every level. And then have to go back to hiring a full-time person to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's our look at desktop presentation graphics. We'll be back in just a minute with this week's computer news. In the random access file this week, now you can use a special camera to put still photo images on your Mac. Canon sells three still video cameras which resemble standard pocket cameras. But instead of capturing the images on film, these cameras store up to 50 images on a 2-inch disk. Now Canon has introduced a SCSI disk drive that can read these disks and place the images on a Mac 2 system. The quality is good enough for color newspaper photos. Delta Tall Software is offering a powerful 24-bit color painting application that costs under $100.
Color Mac Cheese does full color picture manipulation for any screen depth. It also includes blends and wash effects, a dynamic help window, and full support of color printing through Apple's LaserWriter 6.0 driver. To keep the price down, Mac Cheese supports Apple's PIC format only. Japanese sources say Hitachi is breaking records with a faster new fiber optics device. The device transmits coherent light signals at 10 gigabytes a second and has a response time of 30 picoseconds. The emitter packet consists of a miniaturized laser controlled by an integrated circuit. It is supposedly only a few centimeters wide. Commercial production is expected to begin this summer. Electronic information kiosks combining video, telecommunications, voicemail, and computers are apparently becoming a trend. And trendy Los Angeles County has unveiled its first information kiosk in the Pasadena Superior Court. The kiosk features touchscreen access to information, such as how to obtain a marriage license or where to find entertainment events in L.A. Discussions on a CompuServe forum indicate that computer manufacturers are opposed to legislation pending in California that would expand the rights of software and hardware purchasers. The legislation would penalize manufacturers if support and upgrade policies are not clearly displayed on products. Violators would be required to provide customer support for an additional 10 years, or buyers could demand a full refund and still keep the product. Hearings on the bill started last week. Well, this week, we take a look at the top-selling software programs for the PC, according to PC Connection. Topping the list are Expanded Memory Manager and QRAM, both from QuarterDeck, followed by WordPerfect 5.1, DeskView, and TurboTax. Quicken 3.0 is number five, followed by PC Globe, Peter Norton Advanced Utilities, PC USA, and Procom Plus. Mobius Technologies is selling a full-page display monitor that's roughly half the cost of a Radius full-page display. The Mobius monitor includes an integrated video controller and accelerator at no extra charge. The price until May 31st is $695. After that, the company doesn't say what the price will be. Well, finally, if you were inspired by Earth Day to do something about global pollution, you might want to take a look at Chris Crawford's new simulation, Balance of the Planet. The program puts you in charge of the Earth's environment, and you have to handle problems such as acid rain, nuclear waste, depletion of rainforests, and global warming. Balance of the Planet is available for the PC and the Mac. Retail price is $49.95. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Maria Gabriel. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, which offers online information related to today's subject. Members type Go Chronicles. Non-members call for more information. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, by Byte Magazine and VIX, the Byte Information Exchange, and by Intel Corporation, Personal Computer Enhancement. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.